we're the place where we uh, really dig into stories that look simple at first glance, but often, you know, hide some genuinely surprising twists. Today, we're tackling Tesla's robo-taxi service expansion. You've probably seen the headlines flashing across your feeds, Tesla robo-tax is expanding, and maybe you thought, okay, great, full autonomy, it's really happening now. Okay. But like always, the real story is, well, a bit more complicated. So our mission today is to peel back those layers. We've got a really interesting news article to guide us. We're going to figure out what makes this specific expansion uh, not just noteworthy, but honestly pretty unexpected. We'll get into the regulatory stuff, what driverless even means here, and, you know, the bigger picture for self-driving cars. Exactly. This deep dive is going to show, I think, how deploying this kind of cutting-edge tech in the real world mm. It's always this complex mix. You've got the innovation, sure, but also public perception and crucially uh, the rules and regulations. OK, let's unpack this then, because the detail that really jumped out at me and it feels, I don't know, almost backwards for a robo taxi is that these vehicles in San Francisco, they actually come with a human driver yeah. right now. Yeah, that's the key detail. So let's start big picture. Tesla's robo-taxi service is officially live in the San Francisco Bay Area. That part's true. It's the second city after Austin, Texas, where they started earlier. And the news definitely gives this impression, right, of uh, driverless model-wise just cruising around everywhere. Well, the headlines certainly suggest rapid progress. And, you know, from purely a tech ambition perspective, yeah. moving from just one pilot city to another major metro area this quickly, that's... Uh, that's pretty remarkable in itself. Mm -hmm. But like we said, there's this really critical difference, almost a paradox maybe, between Austin and San Francisco. Our source mentions that in Austin, you'd have a safety monitor, but they're sitting in the passenger seat. Here in San Francisco, though, the robotaxis have a safety driver behind the steering wheel. So when you hear robotaxi, but then you hear human driver behind the wheel, what does that immediately signal to you? It tells us right away we're not looking at pure, unassisted autonomy. Not in the way most people probably picture a robot taxi anyway. This difference, uh, it points straight to the regulations. It seems Tesla just doesn't have the green light yet in California. Right. All the necessary approvals, you know, to run paid taxi rides without anyone driving. It's a really stark example of how the legal side can actually define how a technology gets used. Right. And it's not just a small detail they're waiting on. The article is quite clear. Tesla does hold a transportation charter permit from the California Public Utilities Commission, the CPUC. That lets them carry passengers, OK, but in a non-autonomous vehicle, meaning with a driver. But here's the kicker. They apparently have yet to apply for the permits required to test and deploy driverless taxis in the state. It's almost like they're operating under a totally different service category for now. Essentially, yes. It's a workaround, perhaps, to get boots, or rather wheels, on the ground. So moving on then, what does this service actually look like on the ground in San Francisco? Who gets to try it? Because access isn't open to everyone. It's currently on an invite-only basis. Mm -hmm. Seems like Tesla owners, influencers, and investors are getting the first invite. So you can't just hail one on your app yet. No, not yet. Standard procedure, really. And the area they're operating in is also pretty limited, not like the uh, joke Elon Musk made about Austin's phallic-shaped geofenced area. Mm. Here, it's described as more constrained in a more nondescript area. But it does cover several key cities, San Francisco itself, Berkeley, Hayward, Fremont, and San Jose. And that invite-only geofence strategy, that's very typical, almost textbook for rolling out new tech like this, especially autonomous vehicles. You start limited, keep it within the fine zones. It lets companies grab that crucial real-world data, refine the system in a controlled way, and kind of navigate those early regulatory complexities. It's actually a pretty measured approach, even if the robo-taxi name suggests something much bigger already. Yeah, that makes sense. And this whole regulatory angle, it connects back to what Elon Musk himself said recently, right, yeah. about this Bay Area launch. He posted on X, you know, formerly Twitter, saying the service would hit the Bay Area in a month or two. And he specifically tied that timing to getting regulatory approvals. But then, well, here's the twist. The service actually launched ahead of that schedule, but it launched without having all the paperwork sorted for truly driverless operations. Right. So if we zoom out a bit, what this really highlights is this classic tension, isn't it? between how fast technology can move, driven by you know vision and investment, and the pace of regulation, which is often much slower, much more deliberate. Innovation sprints ahead while figuring out the safety rules, the legal stuff, building public trust. It can take years. It's a perfect example, really, of the drive to innovate sometimes getting ahead of the processes meant to manage it safely. So let's bring it back to the listener. What does this all mean for you if you're following this space or just curious about the future? It really underlines that even with super advanced tech, 
the human factor regulation, public opinion, and yes, even an actual human driver for now is absolutely crucial. It dictates how these things actually roll out and how we even understand them. It's not just about coding the AI. Exactly. And it fundamentally changes what we mean by robo-taxi, doesn't it? What counts as fully autonomous in one place might just be effectively a fancy ride-hailing service with a driver somewhere else because of the local laws. It's a really fascinating real-world look at just how messy it can be to slot brand new tech into our existing cities and legal systems. It's definitely not like flipping a switch. So yeah, the San Francisco RoboTaxi expansion, it's way more than just a simple tech launch. It's a proper case study, really, in how the rules of the road literally and legally shape what driverless actually means day to day. It's a good reminder that headlines often just scratch the surface, and the nuance underneath is usually where the interesting stuff is. And this whole situation, it leaves us with a pretty important question to think about, doesn't it? We know Tesla has reportedly faced other questions and challenges with its robo-taxes, things like, you know, what happens if someone messes with them? Or people asking, is this a revolution or another debacle? And we know how complex it would be to bring this to somewhere like New York City. So how is this ongoing dances back and forth between rapid innovation and slower regulation going to keep shaping the future for all autonomous vehicles? And maybe just as important, how will public perception shift and change as we see more of these kinds of uh, nuanced real world rollouts? Definitely something to mull over. Next time you see a big tech headline, maybe pause and think there's probably a deeper story there. And it's often the most revealing part.